Hi, and welcome to Ember in Action series, episode 11, User Authentication. In this episode, we'll implement token authentication using JOT, which stands for JSON Web Token. First, we'll talk a little bit about the theory of how token authentication works. Then we start from creating login form, and that means we'll create route, template, and component as usual. Then we'll use simple auth and simple auth token packages to implement authentication itself. Then we'll make mock server to provide our app with JOT token. And in the end, we'll make login and logout links to appear in navbar depending on if user authenticated or not. So let's get started. So let's talk a little bit about how token authentication works. First thing we need to remember is that web server is stateless, which means it doesn't store any state, like current user and such. In standard web application, we used cookie-based sessions to emulate state. But now, when we have separate server API, we can't do that. Well, technically we can, but we shouldn't. Instead of it, we use tokens. So here how it works. First, client sends request to some authentication route to server with valid credentials, like username and password. Server checks credentials and then, if they are OK, generates encrypted token and return it back to client. In our case, this token will be created with JOT standard. Now, client saves this token, and until it has one, from client-side perspective, user is considered to be authenticated. From now on, client includes this token in every request it makes to the server. It can be included in many ways, but the most popular one is as a header authorization. Now it's server responsibility to handle authorization. If API route should be protected, then server gets this token, checks it for validness, and if it's OK, provide access to route, otherwise responds with 401 status. So these are basics of token authentication theory, so let's get down to business. First, let's run Ember server. And here you can see we have some kind of error, and that's the deprecation that I introduced in previous episode with actions for validation and on. It advised me to use input focus out instead like this. So let's fix this deprecation. So let's go to book form .hbs file, and here, instead of action, we'll use focus out. And instead of this on focus out, we just remove it like this. So now if we go back and we restart server, everything should be fine. OK, so let's create our login route and login form. As usual, we'll start from link. So let's go to navbar hbs file. And here we introduce another unordered list tag with nav, navbar, nav, and navbar write classes. Inside of it, we'll define new link to, and we call it login route with tag name list item and empty anchor tag log in, like this. So now we need to define this route, so let's go to router. And here, let's define route, which we call login. So now we need to create template for this login. So let's go to app templates login.hbs. Here we'll render login form component. So let's define row. Inside of it, we'll have call small six and call small offset three. And inside of this divs, we'll have login form. And this form will take credentials and action, which we call authenticate. So this stuff should be very familiar by now, right? OK, so now we need to provide our credentials object from route to the component, as well as this authenticate action. So we need to create login route. So let's do this in app routes. We define login.js. That's going to be Ember import route. And as usual, we'll have model here, which in this case is going to be just a simple Ember object. Let's create one. And the credential object just consists from email and password. Now we need to set this credentials object on the controller. And the last thing we need to do is to define actions object and inside of it define authenticate function. And this function will take some kind of credentials. And for now, we just console.log these credentials, like this. So now we need to create this login form components template. So let's define one in app templates components. We define login form.hbs. And that's going to be a very simple form. 
So we're going to have form. Let's define action to be submit like we did before. And we run it on submit event. And inside of this form, we'll have two form groups. The first one will be the label for email. And the input will be with value credentials email. And of course, we need to provide class form control. Very easy, right? Let's copy this, duplicate it. And instead of email here, we'll have password. And for password input field, we need to provide type password like this. And the last thing we need to do is button with class button, button primary, login, and type of this button is submit. Okay, very easy. So I leave it up to you to implement validation of this form, which can serve as a good exercise. So now in this login form component, we need to send action. So let's create it. In app components, we define login form.js, and there's going to be a component. And inside of it, we just define actions, object, submit. It's going to be a function that just makes this send action, action, and it provides these get credentials. So like we did before. So let's test it in the browser. We can see that now we have login link. If we go there and provide some data, when we log in, we have our credentials object with provided data. Excellent, it works. So now we need to make request to server to authenticate user and get JOT token. We could do it manually, the whole thing, but that's a lot of details we'd need to implement by ourselves, like where and how to store this token, or how to include token into each request, etc. So we'll use excellent simple auth package and its extension simple auth token, which provides us with token and JOT authenticators. So let's install them. For that, we go to terminal and let's install npm install save dev embassy li simple auth. So after we install it, we need to generate embassy.li simple auth. And we need to do the same thing with token. embassy.li simple auth token and generate token, but without embassy.li. Like this. And this is just instructions from the readme file. So to use simple auth, we need to rename our email into identification and then set our identification to be email. Sounds cool, right? So in our login.js route right here, we set credentials object with email and password fields. So this email should be changed to identification. And of course, in login form.hbs file, we need to change this credentials email to identification. So now we need to make request to server. We make in our request and login route right here in authenticate. So instead of this console.log, we'll get session. And this session object is provided to us by simple auth. And this object has several methods. One of them is authenticate. And this method takes two parameters. First is authenticator. What authenticator do we want to use? And the second one is actual credentials. For authenticator, we'll use simple auth authenticator colon jot. And this authenticator is provided by simple auth token package. So let's have a look in the browser. First of all, of course, we need to run server. Now let's go to browser and let's try to log in with some data. And you can see that we're making post request to API token auth. And the payload of our request is password and username. Why username? Well, because identificator by default is username we need to change it to email. And also we can change this API token out to some another endpoint that we want to have. So let's do this. For that, we need to go to environment.js file and right here after we define this environment object, let's do environment simple auth token. And here we define some configurations. And the first one is identification field which we want to be email. And the second one is server token endpoint. And let's make it API slash tokens. So now if we restart server and in browser, let's try it again. You'll see that we make a request to tokens 
and the payload has email and password. Nice, it works. So the next step is to implement server response. So for that, we need to create a new mock file. Let's do this. In our server folder, in mocks, we create tokens.js. Here we export function. Inside of this function, we need to define express and our router. So we'll do router equals express router, like this. And at the end here, we'll use app use for API tokens. We mount our router. So for this mock, we need only one endpoint, the post request. So let's do this router post. We'll have function with request and response. That's pretty standard express stuff. So inside of this, we need to check for authentication. So what does it mean to check it? We need to check for username and for password. So for example, we can do something like this request body and we'll take email and it should equal to some user email and request body password should equal to user password. So if this condition is true, then user is valid and we need to generate token and respond with this token to the client. Otherwise, we just respond with status 401 and end this. Okay, we need of course to create user here. So let's define it var user, simple JavaScript object with email. Let's make it test at test.com and password secret, very secure one. So of course in real world, we'll have some kind of a database and password should be encrypted and all this jazz, but this is just a mock, right? So now inside of here, we need to generate tokens. Let's define token and we're going to generate it with JSON web token node library. So we'll have it right here. Let's define jot equal require JSON web token. And of course we need to install it. We'll do it in a second, but now we can use it. And this jot library has sign method, which takes two parameters. First one is the payload which is just the simple object of data that we want to provide to client. For example, it could be user ID or user email or username. Nothing fancy though. So we'll provide user email. And the second parameter is our secret key for encryption of this token, secret key. And now we can respond with this token like this, but that's not all simple auth makes simple application slash JSON request. So if we go to server index.js, we can see that we have for body parser here, we have type application VND JSON, which means JSON API, but simple out making simple application slash JSON request. So let's duplicate this line and provide here just a simple JSON as well. So now we need to go to terminal and let's install with save dev. JSON web token. Okay, let's run server. So let's have a look. In a browser, we again try to submit invalid credentials and we have response 401, which is good. Let's submit good credentials with secret. And now we have successful post request. And in response, we have token. Here is our JSON token. And this token is handled automatically by simple auth. It's stored and can be used, which is really cool. But last thing that we need to do is to specify authorizer. This authorizer will include token in every request to the server. So if now, for example, we go to books and try to create new book, we'll see in our book request here in headers, we do not have authorization header. Okay. Let's go to environment.js file and here let's add another configuration, simple auth, and we just specify authorizer and the authorizer will be simple auth authorizer colon token. And this authorizer is provided to us by simple auth token package. So now if we restart server and try it again, let's create another book, add book. Now if we go back here to see, here it is authorization bearer and our token, which is stored locally in local storage. 
so we do not need to do it manually, which is always a good thing, right? Okay, so the last thing in this episode, let's show this login link only when we are not authenticated and log out when we are. And we'll make a couple of small improvements along the way. So first of all, when we log in, we do not redirect anywhere. So let's fix this. In our login.js here, the authenticate method returns promise. So we can use then as we usually do. And here I will have var this, equal this, and we'll use this transition to books. Okay, so now when we log in, we are redirected to books route. Okay, so now let's go back to navbar.hbs file. And here we introduce conditional. So if session is authenticated, and this is authenticated property is provided to us by session object, it just checks for token, if there is a token, then is authenticated returns true. So in this case, we want to provide list item with anchor tag, let's say with action logout, logout, like this. Otherwise, we'll render this link. And let's close a block. This session object is mixed in in every controller. But we are in the component. So we need to pass the session object into the navbar component. For that, let's go to application.hbs file where we actually use this component. And here, let's add session equals session. Let's indent this line as well. So now if you go back to browser, you see that we have logout link. Nice. Of course, this logout link does nothing. So let's fix it. For that, we need to create at last our navbar component. So we go to components, navbar.js, and let's make this component. And inside of this component, we just need to define actions. And that's going to be logout. And again, we'll just use session object. And this session object, which we passed to this component, has invalidate method, which invalidates session. It simply removes the token from the session. Now, if we go back and click on this logout, then we have login. Excellent. And if we log in with validator, we'll have logout here. So we used three things on this session object here. We used authenticate, which takes two parameters, authenticator and credentials. We used invalidate method, which destroys the token. And we used is authenticated property, which we can use to determine if user is logged in or not. And that's it for this episode. Now you know how to implement user authentication using Jot token. If you like this episode, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like this video and share it with your friends or follow me on Twitter. If you want to ask any question or simply say hello, go to my blog, ramzalatik.net. Thank you very much for your time and have a great day.